You can have a healthy relationship and connection with your partner. And the key to that is communication. I know you must have heard a lot about communication, how it's the vital key to maintaining a healthy and thriving relationship. And if you're like me, you would ask the question, how do I communicate? How do I come to this? Because everybody says communication is the key. Communication is the key. How do I arrive there? In this video, I wish to break down the concept of communication for you in your relationship. How you can master communication for a stronger connection in your relationship. I want to start by saying that communication is a human thing. Everything that has to do with the systems of our world is wrapped around communication. Relationship cannot be different from that. Your relationship can only thrive on the wheels of good communication. Effective communication is vital for the growth of a relationship because it plays the role of fostering trust, understanding, deeper bonding, which is intimacy, collaboration, and personal growth between the two parties in that relationship, which is a husband or a wife or partners who are dating. So this is going to help you if you are married, if you are dating, and maybe desiring a relationship because it is going to be of usefulness to you. So I hope you stay glued to watch this. The first point I want to make is conversation is the vital key in communicating in a relationship. You have to know about conversation if you talk about communication in a relationship. Because when it comes to communicating with your partner, your spouse, your friend, you don't have to come to start preaching to them. Preaching is a form of communication. Giving speech and statements in a conference is a form of communication and so many other forms of communication. But in a relationship, conversation holds the vital key to communicating. Because this is your partner, this is your friend, this is someone you love. It is about sitting down with this person to converse. Let's talk, let's exchange ideas, let's exchange information. Like you would sit with a loved friend and you are brainstorming, exchanging ideas in a loving way, the most informal way that you can ever know of. You don't have to start making the conversation in your relationship to become a very formal and rigid thing. You have to allow the flow of the conversation to go on. Don't start making you look like you are in a courtroom with your partner and you're like, wait for your turn. Allow me to speak. Don't cut into my speech. Don't do this. Don't do that. Or maybe you are just giving the rules and regulations in this house or in this relationship as we are together. This is what to do. This is what not to do. No, you exchange ideas. You tell your partner, this is who I am. This is what I love to do. These are the places I love to go. This is my desire for this relationship. So what about you? What do you think? What's your opinion? Because it's about the exchange of ideas and information. That is the conversational part of communicating in your relationship. Which means I get to tell my partner, these are the things I love. These are the things I've been through. These are the Things that I wish to have in my relationship. These are my goals, my aspirations, my dreams. And then you actually wait for them to tell you about themselves because it's not all about you. And having an engaging conversation in your relationship is so exciting because you have to allow the freedom of your partner flowing and you flowing with them like you are talking with a friend. Your partner should be your best friend. You should come to a place whereby they are your best friend you guys talk about things. You guys have to sit down together and laugh together, have fun together, and then talk about the real issues of life. The same way you would like to, you know, gossip, <laughs> maybe like, okay, you call it gist, gist with your partner and tell them things about maybe your experience at work or a funny thing that you saw, or you talk about sports, you talk about other things. When it comes to conversing in your relationship, let it get deeper than just talking. Because some people assume that they are communicating just because they are talking. And when it comes to that, you can realize that people just talk about, you know, how are you? Fine. How was your day? You know, you just talk about the flimsy thing, but you never talk about yourself, the deep things. Who are you? What do you really like? What are you like? What is your dream? What is your aspiration? What is your hope? What is your mindset about relationship? What do you really want in a relationship? When it comes to marriage and partnership in marriage, how do you view women in marriage? If you're not married yet, 
Or if you are married, what is the dream forward? Is it just to have kids and send them to school? What next? Do you dream of building legacy together? And there's a lot to talk about. So you just have to learn how to converse. And then don't just talk, but deep, deep to talk about what really interests both of you and what is of best interest to both of you. And I know those are two unique things. What interests you is good, but what will be of interest to you in uniting together is most important in a relationship. Because you like sports, I may just like to come to you and talk about sports because you like it. But sports will not help our relationship grow. So what will be of growth to our relationship will be us talking about our future together. If you are dating, even if we are married. So let me go ahead to the second point. Communication is a choice. Now when it comes to this, you have to know that it takes conscious choice and effort to communicate. Communication does not just happen out of the blues. Oh, now we are dating or we are married or maybe this is where we are as friends and you expect that communication will just pop out of you. It is a choice. It is a conscious and deliberate act. You have to agree to communicate. You have to be free to communicate. And with this, I would like to talk about the aspect of people saying, I am not the talking type. Oh, you're not the talking type. But there are things that interest you when you sit with some group of your friends and you love to talk about. What do you call that? You're not still the talking type. Then it means we would miss communicating in a relationship to mean being a talkative. There's a difference between a talkative and you embracing communication in your relationship. Conversing with your partner doesn't make you a talkative. Having to talk about things that bother you in your heart or to speak your mind is not being a talkative. In the scriptures, the Bible talks about nagging, which is a quarrelsome wife. And sometimes women are afraid to speak their mind or to say what really bothers them or maybe to express their opinion because it feels like by the time I start expressing my opinion and communicating and telling this man what I really want, it will seem like I'm nagging. Or maybe you feel like by the time I tell this person that what they are doing to me, I don't like it, they will feel like I'm nagging at them. No, that's not nagging. That is communication. You need it to grow together. You need it to help each other grow. You need it to grow the relationship. Now, let me read this scripture. Please pay attention as we read it because I want to show you something in this scripture. The scripture says, A quarrelsome wife is as annoying as constant dripping on a rainy day. Stopping her complaints is like trying to stop the wind or trying to hold something with greased hands. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. I want you to see the last part of that scripture comes from the context of a wife that is quarrelsome. Now, we'll explain that. Sometimes, women are afraid because they don't want to be seen as a quarrelsome wife. And I want to say this also, that there are quarrelsome men, there are quarrelsome boyfriends, there are quarrelsome husbands. So it's not just like, it's like women are the only ones that are quarrelsome. They are nagging husbands also. So it's talking about communication. How do you communicate? It is a choice. So by the time it's only one person that is talking and the other person does not bring contribution or respond, it will feel like that person is nagging because they are the only ones who seem to talk. And because they're the only one who seems to talk, they become the problem. And I know there's a difference between having to communicate and becoming co a complainant. Because by the time you make it a constant complaint, constant dripping, without a solution, there's a problem somewhere. There's a problem lacking in that particular relationship if there's one complaint that keep on going. If you people have an issue, instead of allowing the complaint to remain, get to the scripture that says, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens the countenance of another. Go through the context. If my wife is complaining, assuming I'm married, I should get to know if this thing is disturbing her. Then let's talk about it. Why is it disturbing you? Or let me see to this. Is this something that is a problem for me? Or something that we need to join us together to solve? That is where communication is a choice. I need to make the conscious choice to sit down with my partner Let's talk about this or let's talk about that. So this is not a thing for you to get to a place whereby you say, I'm not a talking type. So this communication thing is not for me. Then I will tell you if a communication thing is not your thing, then a relationship thing should not be your thing because relationship needs communication. 
And when God created man, God created man for fellowship. And there's no fellowship that happens without communication. So in your relationship, you need to converse with your partner for that fellowship and union to be present and for you people to grow together. That choice has to be there. So I will tell you again that communication is the lifeline of any relationship. Good communication is that lifeline. And how do you arrive at a good communication as a conscious choice? You have to be so free in communicating such that interjection is allowed. It doesn't mean that it should be, allow me to finish what I'm saying before you come in. Maybe as your partner is talking and a thought comes into your mind, oh, sorry to interject. I didn't mean to cut you. Just bring in, chip in your idea, your opinion. I know there's a place to allow someone to express their full thoughts before you come in. Maybe if there's a heated issue, you have to allow them to express their thoughts before you come in. Listen without trying to listen to respond, but listen to understand. Number three, communicate to learn from each other. Before you can know how to communicate better, you need to know that communicating needs you to be teachable, which is what I just said in the last point, listening without trying to listen to respond, but listening to understand your partner. I'm trying to get you, I'm trying to understand you. And when you don't get them, you say, oh, please, can you repeat that? Or what did you mean here? Because you don't want to assume what you thought they meant. Because by the time you bring that assumption or presumption, you will not allow the, the conversation to flow as it should. So you should communicate to learn from each other. And the best thing you can learn is not about the idea of like, what does my partner really know? It's not a competition of saying the hierarchy of knowledge, oh, I am knowledgeable or smarter or more intelligent than my partner. It's not that. It's not about who is most intelligent. It's not about who has the, the, the vast knowledge of things. It's about understanding your partner. I'm communicating to learn about you. I'm communicating with you to learn about you because if I don't communicate with you, I won't understand you. I will not learn about you. Good communication is to a relationship what sunshine is to a flower. That is why you need to communicate to learn. Learning your partner. Learning their mindset. Learning how they think, what they like, what they don't like. And they also learning you because it has to be mutual. It is not a one-way thing. Relationship has never been a one-way thing. If it is done for a one way, it will be lopsided. And then there will be a disbalance there. And every disbalance that happens in any relationship at all comes from both parties. There's something that they miss in their communication, which they need to fix. So you need to adopt the teachable approach when you are communicating with your partner. Like trying to see what you can love about their mindset. What are those things that they envision that actually intrigues you. Allow that to be something that blesses your mind. Like lay your partner. Communicate to learn about them. Which is communicate to understand them. Number four, communication is a journey. Communication is never a destination. It's always a journey. The first time you start communicating, it will be very weird if you're not used to it. That is why you can learn to communicate. Everybody doesn't know how to communicate. Of course, when you grew up as a child, Communicating with people was a little bit tense because even your language or maybe English for us that are not from no English speaking countries, English was a hard thing to say. I could remember for myself, like when I get to school, speaking English, I'll be very careful to speak because I don't want people to laugh at me. I don't want people to make fun of me. And most of us were like that. So this is not something that you know, like something that you grew with or you were born with, it's something you get to learn, so it's going to be a journey. It might feel weird at first, but the more you guys keep on communicating, you get to enjoy it. And being a journey, it's a dynamic journey. Communication will never be like, oh, I know the expected results. Some days it will be very fun, it will be very beautiful, it will be very exciting. Other days it will be very tense. And you should not run because of the tension. You should hold the communication. The one thing I would personally love to tell my partner is our test of maturity is when we are having a conflict or when we are disagreeing, but we can sit to communicate. That's when we are matured. The test of our maturity is seen when we have some mental friction, some conflict and disagreement, 
And we can still sit together and be like, I'm not happy with you. You've actually annoyed me or what you did annoyed me. But still, I'm going to talk with you. You know, can we run away? Because most people, when they have issues, they take flights, they run. Because when there's an issue, the next thing that comes to mind is, oh, the relationship is a threat. It's a threat to the relationship. No, see every conflict as an opportunity for growth for both of you. This is an opportunity to know each other. The opportunity to know somebody's dislike is when there is a conflict and disagreement. That's when you will know their dislike because that's when they will show you the true measure of how they dislike the particular thing that happened or what you said or what you did. So that is when to grow. That is when to understand each other even better. Don't see it as a trait to the relationship. So you have to understand that your communication is a journey. This is someone you don't know from day one. You would be with your sister or your brother. You guys fight. Like you disagree. But you're coming from the same parent, same background, same culture, same everything. And now you're meeting someone that is from a different place from you. The best way for you people to unite is through communicating. And knowing that this is a journey. We are never going to be perfect with this. Because every day as we communicate, some days will come so tense. But the tension is not a threat. The tension is actually to help us understand each other. The tension is to help us build trust. The tension is to help us build understanding. The tension is to help us build the bond and become deeper. So the dynamic journey of communication in your relationship will always hit you that some days you might have a bad mood. You might be in your, you might be having your worst day. And the honesty is that if you're having your worst day and your partner is having their best day, when you people come together, there will be a clash because the expectations are different. When they are coming, they are coming to share their joy, you know, just engage and they and need a response back. And you, you are coming here, you are already sad, you are not in your best mood and you are like really down and when they are excited. So what do you do in such a place? It's the dynamic. It's for you to know that, okay, this is a different place in our journey. I'm happy and they are not. How can I be there for my partner instead of running away? Because it is very easy to take the reaction of running away to look for someone who is as excited as you to share the same energy because your partner's energy might be rubbing off on you and making you that at your best day to feel sad and down. I know this is real talk. And in that moment, it's very easy for you to think, did I do anything wrong? Why are you, why is your voice like that? Why are you talking to me like that? Why are you being so, so upset, like irritable? You know, it might have been, they, they, they went through something. They might have experienced something at work or in school, whatever. If you're married or if you're dating. So to have good communication is, if you are willing to open up, you'll be like, okay, let's talk about this. Let's see this through. So we can, we'll go into deeper, you know, things about this in my next video. But you just have to know that communication is very important and it's a journey. That some days it will be exciting. You are in your favorite place and they are in their favorite place. So you push your joys and the energy is the same and you can match on 100 over 100, 100 percent. But some days will not be like that. So embrace the journey and know that it is a journey and you walk through that very place of argument and disagreement. And it's not a threat to the relationship. It is an opportunity. The number five point I want to make is that healthy communication in a relationship meets healthy compromise. There has to be a common ground that you people have to come to whenever you're communicating. It doesn't have to be like, my opinion stands first. I always want to win. And the other person always wants to win. You always have to come to a place of letting go your ego and your pride and coming to have an healthy compromise, which is, I would call it healthy alignment. Let's align. I do not agree with you and you don't agree with me. So we both can be right. Yeah, both and. You both can be right because you're coming from different perspective, different understanding. You both can be right, but then how can we come together? How can we align in a healthy way? I don't accept with your mood of how you want to train a child. I come from different mindset and you don't accept with mine. Okay, what do we do together? What do we really want? Let's have this healthy compromise so that we can go forward. It happens through communication. You don't always have to agree on everything because if you have to say yes, sir, to everything, or yes, ma, or yes, dear, yes, darling, to everything, you are not yourself. You end up not being authentic. And I'd love to make this other point. Whenever you have this communication with your partner, and maybe you don't want to tell them something, it's better not to tell them you won't understand. You know, this is personal to me because 
If my partner is to tell me, you won't understand, I start telling him, like, are you trying to dumb down on my intelligence that I'm not going to understand? Okay, I know that I may not have vast knowledge on everything, but for you to communicate what you went through to me, which I've realized that you're not looking fine, you're not looking bright, and something must have happened, and you said that something happened, yes, agreed, accepted, granted, but you're telling me I won't understand, no? My question would be, are you willing to tell me to communicate, to bring me into it, because communication is just about sharing and transmitting the information, and it's going to help you, notwithstanding, I don't have to have solution for the problem you went through, but if I learn how to communicate with you, and I learn how to listen actively to you, and empathize with you, even though I may not understand everything, but let me just be there to tell you, sorry, oh, it is well. You having that opportunity, and that safe place, to pour out, it's going to be of help to you. When you come from a place of realizing that you have walked this journey of communication with my partner, you can now come to this place of, I don't have to tell my partner, you won't understand. Or I can tell them, if I don't want to tell them what is bothering me now, I will talk about it later. I don't have the capacity to release it now. Because you just have to know, it's a place of release to communicate with your partner, the troubles you're facing. It's a place of release of trying to lay it out, vent out, that burden and free your heart so that you people can keep on going. Don't let the issue you had become a problem in the relationship because that language you won't understand to me, it could really cause a fight, <laughs> a really big one. I think you should look for better words or tell them, I'm going to tell you later and don't fail to tell them later because some ladies, I would say I'm a man, <laughs> have the habit of life. We talk about that later and they never talk about it again. When you bring it up, like change the dicks, Change the cassette. Please don't change the cassette on someone when they think it's important to them. Walk through the cassette, even if you don't like it. And give yourselves the opportunity to learn each other. It's communication. Allow room for a healthy compromise. Let me go to the last point. The requirements of good communication. You need to develop active listening, which is, I'm not listening to respond. I'm listening to understand. I'll probably have a response, but I'm not really listening to respond. And the second thing is, you must empathize. You learn how to have empathy. Put yourself in your partner's shoe and try to understand. If this was me, that is the best way to know how to respond to them. Be open-minded. Don't just be close-minded such that you are in, your, in the world of your own. Your opinion stands. What you think about what your partner just shared from your opinion standpoint stands or whatever prejudice you had about them. No, be open-minded. The presumptions you've had about your partner should not play a role in your communication whenever you're talking. If that presumption is something that hurts, it can become a topic of communication someday. Learn to validate your partner. Learn to tell them the good qualities that they have. Learn to compliment your partner. Learn to be appreciative of your partner. And when it comes to the compliment part, I will still on there a little. Tell them a little too much how much you love them. Tell them a little too much how amazing they are. Don't be like the old people who said, no, if you, if you appreciate them, their head will swell. No, allow their head to swell. In fact, do it for their head to swell. You need that. You need that as part of your communication. You need that. Be appreciative. Tell them every little thing. You know, we have a tendency of disregarding the things that matter the most to us. Maybe because of, you know, us becoming too used to it. We have the tendency of allowing familiarity to rob us of being appreciative to our partners. And you need to learn how not to allow that to play a role in your relationship. And you need to learn how to have fun with your partner as you're communicating. Don't just be too rigid. Be open. Have fun. And in conclusion, know that communication is vital to a relationship. And conversation is the vital key to communicate in a relationship. It is not preaching. It is not teaching. It is not lecturing. It is not a court proceeding session whereby I talk your own, let me talk my own. And if someone would interject, you'd be like, why did you cut me? Why do you talk into my talk? You didn't allow me. No, 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 no. Allow interjection. Allow the flow. And I hope that this video makes sense to you and is helpful. If it is, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. And let me know what you think and your experiences in the comment section. I would like to read through your experiences. And next week, I'm going to do another video that will talk about conflict resolution in a relationship through communication. 
and maybe the the pillars of communication in a relationship i'd like to hear from you my name is uem akman this is my youtube channel do well to subscribe and give a thumbs up and let me see your presence in the comment section thank you god bless you bye bye